immediately following the glitzy rollout of the B-21 Raider at Northrop Grumman Secure Facility at Plant 42 in Palmdale, California, the hot take started piling up. It's just an updated B-2 Spirit, and B-2 2.0, big deal, quickly became par for the course on social media. I received a ton of inquiries from people genuinely asking if this is the great leap forward it was billed as or if the B-21 appeared to be just a rehashed spirit. The answer to those types of questions is, well, complicated, but not in a bad way. Yes, in some ways the B-21 is a B-2 2.0. That's a marvelous feature, not a bug. And in other ways, it isn't a B-2 2.0 at all. This unique mix of attributes makes the B-21 program, and the design that has come of it, so promising. Here's why. Aim high. A higher operational ceiling means a better line of sight for sensors and communication systems, which means enhanced situational awareness and broader connectivity over a larger area. Both factors greatly increase the aircraft's survivability, but they also allow the B-21 to become a more effective key enabler for other platforms and a critical player in the sprawling kill web combat communications and sensor architectures of the future. This could include sharing sensor data and potentially working as a networking node and data fusion gateway for other stealthy platforms operating forward and sharing that info not just locally within line of sight, but around the globe beyond line of sight to key decision makers. We have no idea exactly how much of this capability will be available early on in the B-21's career, but we know that open architecture and future upgradability is a massive element of the B-21 design philosophy. The B-21 is multifunctional. U.S. Secretary of Defense Lloyd Austin said at the rollout event in December last year, it can handle anything from gathering intel to battle management. Operating higher up also makes it harder for marauding fighters or airborne early warning aircraft to paint the upper side of the aircraft with radar. This also means greater survivability. Beyond that, it means more efficiency, which translates into a longer unrefueled combat radius. This is critical too, as the B-21 will need to weave its way unrefueled through an enemy's anti-access-slash-area denial defenses that can range out thousands of miles from a target area. By most indications, the B-21's range will likely be startling when it is officially disclosed. Let's talk about the B-21's range. No other long-range bomber can match its efficiency. Secretary of Defense Austin also said during the rollout, it won't need to be based in theater. It won't need logistical support to hold any target at risk. In addition, serving in many other roles beyond striking fixed targets, the B-21 will have to loiter for long periods, potentially deep inside the contested territory as well. Every bit of efficiency helps, and a higher ceiling can help in that regard. It will be very interesting to see what the Air Force says about the B-21 ceiling as time goes on. So yes, in terms of its basic configuration, it would seem that the B-21 is a B-2 2.0, or even an early senior ICE 2.0 of sorts, but for all the right reasons. In other words, some of the B-21's most advanced stealth features are likely more than skin deep. Even the B-21's intriguing windscreen and side windows are a very big departure from the Raider's forebearer. Yes, they look comparatively tiny and clearly, they were the result of a careful balance between signature requirements and visibility considerations. It's likely Raider pilots won't need to look outside, much based on current technology. Even back during the ATB program, the absolute necessity of a windscreen was supposedly debated but being able to see out to your wings and especially looking up for aerial refueling is still important enough to include a windscreen and side windows. Still, these two look heavily influenced by signature demands, especially from lower viewing aspects. The bottom line is that it is very little about the windscreen configuration that harkens back to the B-2. Of course, minimizing the B-21's infrared signature, not just from its exhausts but from its airframe, as well, is more critical than ever in an age of advanced infrared search and track systems proliferating around the globe. The ability of heavily networked integrated air defense systems to blend various sensor capabilities to create a single weapons engagement quality track is precisely the challenge the Raider was designed to confront. The B-21's airframe is likely cooled, 
Using circulating fuel as a heat sink is one known practice, but its exhaust system would be among its most advanced and sensitive features. Once again, we are talking broadband stealth here, a new level of low observable technology, both in terms of RF and IR. The magician's book of tricks here is vast and largely unspoken. We will likely never live to fully comprehend all the features Northrop Grumman has deployed to make their new bomber a guileful KGB, with much of the magic being buried under the jet's almost organic-looking outer shell. The same can probably be said even for the decades-old B-2, for that matter. There is also the subject of the B-21's current color tone. It's light, not dark. This could very well indicate that special attention is being put on daytime operations, not just nighttime ones like its predecessor, which wears a much darker motive. This would fit with the B-21's much broader mission set, as well, which would likely demand daytime operations over, or at least very near highly contested territory. The lighter shade we see could also change once the aircraft's advanced ram coating is fully applied, but it seems to be more of a conscious choice, even at this stage, than just a byproduct of the manufacturing process. The fact is that no aircraft is undetectable, but detecting a puzzling signature for a fleeting moment from a specific angle is not the same as being able to track and engage that target over any significant amount of time. Even signature hotspots can be used to one's tactical advantage. Ultimately, survivability is gained through a cocktail of measures and countermeasures, making the B-21's radio frequency emissions from its sensors and communication systems as undetectable as possible. Advanced electronic warfare capabilities, absolutely game-changing levels of situational awareness, careful route planning, and the ability to adapt on the fly leveraging that awareness, as well as employing new weaponry to fight into and out of a target area, are all probable aspects that would meld together into a lethal and survivable next-generation bomber concept like the B-21. And even the B-21 won't fight alone. The full spectrum of terrestrial and space-based capabilities, including remote ones like cyber attacks on air defense nodes launched from around the globe, would help it succeed in any future fight. But maybe the B-21's greatest trick of all won't be the ability to hide from advanced networks of enemy sensors, it will just exist as an affordable, relatively speaking, stealth bomber. Quantity has a quality all of its own. When facing an enemy like China in the Pacific theater, the B-21 is shaping up to become an essential tool. It seems some have discounted this reality without understanding the nature of the tactical challenges that must be overcome. We are talking about target sets in the many tens of thousands here, and that is still a limited conflict. You need a significant combat mass that can deliver direct, penetrating strikes on targets night in and night out, not just during the opening of a conflict, although that is also essential. There will never be enough standoff weaponry to overcome these numbers, nor can those weapons achieve the same results in many scenarios. In some cases, such as deep bunker busting, there is no standoff weapon short of a nuclear strike to do what a B-21 will be able to do with no P. The B-21 will have to deliver direct strikes in contested airspace, including hitting many geographically displaced targets on a single mission, if need be. We are talking about a different capacity here than the B-2. You cannot take on this challenge with 20 highly finicky bombers, of which a little over half are even usable at any given time. You need large numbers, and they need to be reliable so that their availability doesn't crumble early on in the conflict. On the tactical side, fighters do not have the combat radius or payload to make anywhere near such an impact, and they could have very little impact at all if their tankers are threatened far from their targets and their runways are cratered. The US has overinvested in short-range tactical air power. It's just a glaring and inconvenient reality. The B-21 could help offset that mistake. Raider Revolution The bottom line is that the B-21 is part of something far more significant than itself, and we don't know what else is lurking in the shadows alongside it just outside our field of view. You can bet that there will be some big surprises in this regard in the years to come. And in this way, the B-21 is nothing like the B-2, which was largely envisioned as an a la carte stealth bomber. So yes, the B-21 leans on the lessons learned from the B-2, apparently to even include leveraging elements of its original plan form. So sure, in those ways, 
The Raider is a B2 2.0, but it is far more than just that. It is a culmination of new technologies, existing ones, and new ways of thinking, not just in terms of acquisition and development, but also in terms of redefining what a bomber it is, or at least could be. It's also just a piece, albeit a huge one, both figuratively and physically, in not just one, but potentially two interwoven future air combat ecosystems. With all that being said, a lot still has to go right before the B-21, and whatever else it's being developed with, can be declared a success. There are bound to be major bumps in the road, regardless of the digital engineering and other new technologies and practices that are being applied to its cause. The Raiders test flight program lies directly ahead, and the development and fielding timelines surrounding this program are ambitious. So far, it seems like the B-21 is very much headed in the right direction, even in terms of cost, which is a remarkable achievement in itself. Still, there is so much we don't know about this aircraft or even the larger canvas it was painted on. It remains a ghost, one we got a dramatic glimpse of, but on its terms. As a result, the fleeting raider will likely haunt our dreams and the enemy's nightmares for some time to come.